So I'm literally just pushing off on the next adventure. I'm taking a shortcut over a sandbar because I'm too lazy to go around it. But I'm in croc territory now, so I've got to keep a constant eye out for crocs. The first stop was a hike up a creek in search of a waterfall. I'm just walking up from the boat and checking out this beautiful pool. Fresh water. Perfect temperature. A little bit cold, but not too cold. So crocs, even the saltwater crocs, would swim through here, but it's just so clear on the bottom. And I was able to like really closely check it out. But I'm happy that there's none in here. Dewey last night. Not a bad little campsite though. That's my hat. Someone else left another straw hat sitting on that stump there. And I swear I could do a better job of putting my fly on. That's just to keep it dry. Pretty flash this morning. I'm actually drinking it out of a mug. Normally I just drink it out of that little bowl there. I normally have my food just in one plastic crate which stops it getting splashed and then you can see it keeps the dew off it uh, at night and if it rains a simple chair simple table that folds out those butane gas stoves are great another uh, tub there with cooking stuff uh, he's got two trunks for camera gear uh, this is for really expensive stuff this is slightly less expensive stuff that i need more access to bag of clothes and other little bits um, tent you don't actually need the tent but if you're sitting up at night and the mozzies are bad, it's good. There is a monster croc somewhere over there. I could just hear him. It was just, just the, the depth of the rumble. It sounded kind of like a lion. And uh, you don't hear that very often. But there ain't nothing else in here that makes a noise like that. I wasn't planning on snorkeling here because I expected it to be really choppy. Didn't even bring my other stuff other than a mask. So I'm just gonna jump in here. Just looks like too good to pass up. Might be a lobster under there. This forest is just full of really long straight bits of sapling like that, which would just be ideal for making spears from. It's national park, I can't cut it down, which is fine. But it's just nice to see that such long, straight bits of wood. Just when you think you've seen the best waterfall, another one comes along that's even more amazing. So nice cleaning the salt out of your clothes. Other than the feeling of it, whenever I'm trying to clean the camera lens, if the my shirt's had salt water in it, it just never works. You always have a smudge. Check that out. It's a boulder, I've probably got the size of a room in a house. Very round, and it's just sitting on top of a peak. When it eventually goes, like an earthquake, it's gonna make a hell of a splash. Big school of bait fish under here. And all the birds start to come over. It'd be uh, probably a tuna circling around that school of bait fish. Yeah, that bird just got one. But I've just crossed over into uh, Marine Park Sanctuary, so as tempting as it looks, I can't fish for them. So that peak up there is the highest one on the island. It's three and a half thousand feet, uh, almost 1200 meters. There's no track up there. Um, I'm going to try and climb it tomorrow. Check this out. <laughs> High tide, I'm just squeezing in there. Oh man, I wish you could fish here.
I was looking for a place to chuck my uh, straw hat. I was just about to chuck it there, but that's a green ant nest. That's a bad place to put your hat. So we are in croc country because there's a croc over there. You can only see one eye shining back red, which means he's either a one-eyed croc or he's most likely a side on. When they're, look, when they're looking out here you see two eyes and you can get a rough idea how big they are, but this one can't tell how big he is. Anyway, he's not that far from my camp really. So I put a bit of a barrier up there and uh, the secret is that middle crate there has got a packet of Tim Tams. So uh, when he starts showing down the Tim Tams, that'll give me enough warning to get out of the tent. Uh, I'm gonna go around the back side of that peak there's a saddle apparently, and then keep going up to the very top there. Essential items. I'm leaving a bunch of expensive gear behind, but I don't really have much choice. Done the old underpants on top trick, final measure to dissuade someone from looking underneath. Taking the fuel line off the boat and uh, hidden it up there in the bushes so no one can steal the boat. So there's the ocean there. And I'm basically going to follow up this creek, which is fresh water. I've nearly slipped over twice in the last minute. You can't just keep a slow, steady pace. You have to just keep running and doing dynamic moves to get to the next rock. My pack strap busted pretty early on, so I used the strap off my drone bag to fix it. Time for a lunch break. Queensland is full of nasty plants. This one has barbs that go in both directions. This one is a freaking nightmare. And the prickles on this one break off in your skin if you try to pull them out. It's now almost a granite slab ladder. Pretty hard to find your way. It's getting ridiculous now. I'm gonna have a sense of humor for you pretty soon. Oh, this is turning into an epic slog. The boulders are all loose, and the big ones, when they move, it's scary. There's a bloke about 10, 20 years ago, had a big boulder roll over, crush his legs. I think they found him a few days later and had to have his legs amputated or something. Anyway, it's just a, the kind of place with more loose rocks than you normally get. It's just because it's so geologically young. I can see more sunlight. And that almost looks like a bit of a clearing there. Now I need to offload my camping gear for the summit push. These are like $2 ponchos from a $2 shop are great. Uh, Mars bar, hair torch, dunny paper more to clean the camera lens. First aid, that's just a bandage. Spot tracker so I can say I'm okay. Uh, and emergency, and this one's an EPIRB for emergency as well. It's actually a PLB, slight difference. Stay away, Cloud. I'd love to launch the drone up here, but I just don't have the time to waste. I'm hoping I've got just enough time to get there and back before dark. I don't want to slip off there. Like most mountains, you think you're at the top, only to find out it continues up another rise. After a few of those, I finally found myself on the last run to the peak. This is the country that Rusty, the Aboriginal elder from my last episode, comes from. I needed a special national parks permit to climb the mountain, but I also asked Rusty for his permission. He said it was the dreaming place for thunder and also a dreaming place for his grandmother, but that it was okay if I climbed it. I'm absolutely buggered, <laughs> but uh, we're up here and I reckon I've got probably half an hour to spare too before I've got to dash back down to camp on that saddle. I had a bit more time on the descent to sit and just soak it all in. very steep here and the granite's often covered in gravel or leaves making it very slippery. 
but one slip here and he can slide off some pretty nasty drop. Oh. Thank goodness for that. The sun's setting out of made it back. One with my other inappropriate gear. I'm eating a tin. It's my second tin I'm eating. Just ridiculous on a hike to have a tin. But that's all I had. Well, I actually got a really nice gas stove for this kind of thing, but it's sitting in my car. So I just forgot a bunch of stuff and wasn't actually planning on doing this hike. It was a bit of an afterthought. Oh, you want to see my dodgy camp? So that's a six-man tent. So all I brought was the tent, no poles or anything else, no fly. So I've just jacked it up with a string there, which I'm drying my clothes on. And that'll give me just enough head space there for a mozzie net to go over my head. And then at night, I'll probably wrap the rest of the tent like a tarp over the top of me. So I'll use that Coke bottle as a pillow, probably. Uh, it was a bit of an uncomfortable night, but it wasn't too bad. Five hours later, I made it back to my boat camp. Looks like the dirty undies did the trick. I heard rustling. Check this out. I'm interrupting my nap, mate. So I headed back to the boat ramp after that. Sorry there wasn't more fishing or bush tucker in this one. There's just more national parks and marine park restrictions in this place. It's more of a see and don't touch kind of place. It's nice to see this place being preserved so well. The park staff here are great. So I hope you've enjoyed the episode and please subscribe if you're enjoying the show.